اب وہ برائے راست لیے چلیں گے جنیوہ جہاں پر وزیر خارجہ بلاول بھٹو اس وقت سیشن سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں پاکستان once again expresses its gratitude to the community of nations for the emergency assistance extended to our people. We highly appreciate the United Nations General Assembly's call for the convening of this conference. The magnitude of the damage Pakistan has suffered is monumental. While we remain steadfast in responding to the emergency needs of the affected population and the urgency of restoring their lives and livelihoods, we are according high priority to the resilient recovery and reconstruction of the affected infrastructure. The government of Pakistan has worked with, the inter with international institutions, including the United Nations, the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the European Union, to prepare a comprehensive framework document on resilient recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The 4RF document, which outlines a prioritized and sequential plan defined at the federal and provincial levels to rebuild better from the unprecedented flood disaster and to ensure resilience against future natural disasters. Clearly, Pakistan confronts a monumental challenge. The people and the government will, of course, do everything possible to help ourselves in the process of rebuilding and recovery from this colossal calamity. At least half of the framework plan will be implemented from our own resources. At the level of our local communities, we are already engaged in rebuilding and restoration of homes, villages, roads, and communication networks. Yet Pakistan will need considerable support over the next several years from our international partners to implement this comprehensive plan. We will transform the challenge of recovery and reconstruction into an opportunity to build a more resilient Pakistan, an economy which is dynamic and sustainable. We are determined to do it in an open, transparent, and collaborative way. Excellencies, the rationale for this conference is to demonstrate the international solidarity with Pakistan as it begins its journey towards building back better. We see this conference not as a one-off event, but as the commencement of a long-term partnership with our friends and development partners. We look forward to the generous and sustained commitment of support from you all. I thank you. Thank you, Excellency. We will now watch a video on the floods and rains in Pakistan. Not as a one-off event, but as the commencement of a long-term... جنیوہ میں بین الاقامی ڈونرز کانفرنس کا آغاز ہو گیا ہے وزیر خارجہ بلاول بھٹو نے افتتاحی سیشن سے خطاب کیا
now request the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, to give his remarks. Your Excellency Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, Excellencies, dear friends, thank you all for gathering in solidarity with the people of Pakistan. For decades, I've been privileged to witness the boundless generosity and resilience of the Pakistani people amidst grave threats and upheaval. From earthquakes and floods, to years of relentless terrorist attacks, to geopolitical nightmares like the wars in Afghanistan that have sent millions fleeing across the Pakistani border in search of safety of the decades, a trend that continues today. But even through the darkest moments, the giving spirit of the Pakistani people has shown brightly. I've seen neighbors helping neighbors with food, water and shelter. And I've seen Pakistani communities welcome Afghan refugees with open arms despite their scarce resources. So my heart broke when I saw firsthand the utter devastation moments, the giving spirit of the Pakistani people has shown brightly. I've seen neighbors helping neighbors. But it was especially bitter to watch that country's generous spirit being repaid with the climate disaster of monumental scale. As the video we just watched showed, the epic floods were nothing short of a monsoon on steroids, as I mentioned in my visit, submerging one third of the country three times the area of my own country, Portugal. A terrifying wall of water killed more than 1,700 people, injured thousands more, and affected a total of more than 33 million, displacing 8 million people. It swept over roads, ruined millions of acres of agricultural land, and damaged or destroyed 2 million homes. And it pushed back 9 million people to the brink of poverty. These are not numbers on a page. They are individual women, children and men. They are families and communities. And under the leadership of the government of Pakistan, the United Nations donors and friends rallied to assist. Tents, food, water, medicine and cash transfers were distributed. And the humanitarian response plan of $816 million was launched. But all of that is just a trickle of support in the face of the growing flood of need. At the same time, the people of Pakistan met this epic tragedy with heroic humanity. From the first responders rushing to affected communities, to the doctors and nurses I met, fighting against time to save lives in overcrowded hospitals. And I will never forget hearing the personal testimonies of women and men I met in September in the wake of the ruins. They left their own homes and all their worldly possessions to help their neighbors escape the rising waters. They sacrificed all they had to help others and bring them to safety. Excellencies, we must match the heroic response of the people of Pakistan with our own efforts and massive investments to strengthen their com communities for the future. Rebuilding Pakistan in a resilient way will run in excess of 16 billion US dollars and far more will be needed in the longer term. And this includes not only flood recovery and rehabilitation efforts, but also initiatives to address daunting social, environmental and economic challenges. Reconstructing homes and buildings, redesigning public infrastructure, including roads, bridges, schools and hospitals, jump-starting jobs and agriculture, ensuring that technology and knowledge are shared with, pa shared with Pakistan to support its efforts to build a climate-resilient future. And throughout, supporting women and children, we are up to 14 times more likely than men to die during disasters and face the brunt of upheaval and loss in humanitarian crises. 
Women are consistently on the front lines of support during times of crisis, including in Pakistan. Their efforts are essential to a strong, equal, inclusive recovery. It is crucial that women play their full part as leaders and participants at every level, contributing their insights and solutions. And we also need to right a fundamental wrong. Pakistan is doubly victimized by climate chaos and the morally bankrupt global financial system. That system routinely denies middle-income countries the debt relief and concessional funding needed to invest in resilience against natural disasters. And so we need creative ways for developing countries to access debt relief and concessional financing when they need it the most. And above all, we need to be honest about the brutal injustice and loss and damage suffered by developing countries because of climate change. If there is any doubt about loss and damage, go to Pakistan. There is loss, there is damage. The devastation of climate change is real. From floods and droughts to cyclones and torrential rains. And as always, those developing countries least responsible are the first to suffer. Pakistan, which represents less than 1% of global emissions, did not cause the climate crisis. But it is living with its worst impacts. South Asia is one of the world's global climate crisis hotspots in which people are 15 times more likely to die from climate impacts than elsewhere. At a recent UN climate conference in Egypt, the world made some important breakthroughs. Uh, this includes progress on addressing loss and damage, speeding the shift to renewables, and an unprecedented call to reform the global financial architecture, particularly multilateral development banks. It also includes accelerating efforts to cover every person in the world with early warning systems against climate disasters within five years. But we need to go much further. Countries on the front lines of the climate crisis need massive support. Developed countries must deliver on their commitment to double adaptation finance and meet to 100 billion US dollars goal urgently without delay. And we need to reverse the outrageous trend of emissions going up when they must go down to prevent further climate catastrophe. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today's conference is the first step on a much longer journey towards recovery and reconstruction in Pakistan. The United Nations will be there for the long end. The world must be too. And at every step, we will be inspired by the endurance and generosity of the people of Pakistan in this critical and colossal mission. Thank you. Thank you deeply, Secretary General. I now call upon the Prime Minister of Pakistan, His Excellency Mohammed Shabazz Sharif, to give his remarks. Sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Foreign Minister Bilawal Dadari Bhutto, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum, Good Morning and Guten Morgen. It's really a great pleasure and an honor to be here and I express my profound gratitude to my friend Secretary General for co-chairing with me this conference and also I want to convey Secretary General the deep feelings of the people of Pakistan the way you have promoted their cause spoken about their miseries and problems and become a very powerful voice to articulate what they went through during this summer. I remember on uh, 
10th of September, I was with you, along with Foreign Minister, in refugee camps in the province of Sindh and Balochistan, and you were standing by orphans, widows, mothers, and I remember vividly, you met a mother who had given birth to a child the night earlier, and a makeshift school run by UNICEF. Excellency, this, the people of Pakistan, will remember forever. I'm also very grateful to so many heads of states and governments, as well as ministers and other partners who have joined us today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a turning point of history. Events are moving faster than we can imagine. And it is not only a question of uh, how to survive, but it's a question how to maintain our bodies. It's a question how to maintain our dignity and honor by moving forward with a sense of purpose and a sense of achievement. Secretary General, as you have just mentioned, the, the Foreign Minister, you so aptly described at that time, at the heart of the perfect storm of problems, lies this prolonged exposure to a monsoon on steroids. In a matter of two months, the ground beneath us was literally physically taken away. The tsunami, the most devastating floods, affected 33 million people of Pakistan, killed more than 1,700 people, including children. And this located 8 million people. More than 8,000 kilometers of roads were washed away, and more than 3,000 affected rail system was deeply damaged. Education was disrupted for 2.6 million students, including 1 million girls. One can go on about the records broken by this disaster, but truly speaking, we are racing against time. We are very grateful to the generous support extended to my country by the United Nations, the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the IMF, the, I, the AIIB, and the European Union, as well as many friendly countries around the globe. However, relief work is yet not over, especially in parts of Sindh and Balochistan. Our young and able foreign minister belong to the province of Sindh, where the flood water still needs to be drained to reclaim the agricultural land, to grow food, to build homes, reconstruct infrastructure, and rehabilitate institutions and services. Excellencies, you will appreciate that we need to give 33 million people who are deeply affected by the floods their future back. Their families must stand on their feet and they must come back in life and earn their livelihood. Today's convening is an attempt to give my people another chance at getting back on their feet. Last October, in collaboration with our development partners, we prepared a post-disaster needs assessment, PDNA, that calculated the total destruction and economic losses from the floods to exceed $30 billion, which is 8% of Pakistan's GDP pushing 9 million people 
into abject poverty. Excellencies, the Pakistani nation as well as the state has responded courageously to this catastrophe. Those who had little came forward to help those who had lost everything. Millions volunteered to feed, clothe and shelter their unfortunate brothers and sisters. 20,000 troops, hundreds of helicopters, aircrafts and motorboats were mobilized for round-the-clock rescue operations. And in that, I count those wonderful contributions from our friendly countries in the Middle East, in Europe, Far East, and from other parts of the world. They saved thousands of lives and quickly restored disrupted communications. All resilience funds were repurposed to provide cash grants of over $400 million to more than 2.7 million households. Despite our acute financial constraints, we mobilized around $575 million for the emergency, including the UN flash appeal. Excellencies, the one lesson we have learned is that nothing can go back to business as usual. Tough choices will continue to be made, and I'm painfully aware that a taxonomy of harder and harsher reforms will make lives in the Pakistani streets and villages harsher than ever before. But the scale of the resource gap for funding crisis recovery is so wide that it has redefined how we think about resilience. Frankly, it has changed life forever. Building on the post-disaster needs assessment, my government has prepared a comprehensive framework plan for recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction with resilience. Its broad contours are set out in the 4RF document that will be presented to you in the next session of the conference. The first part of the 4RF plan reflects the priorities for recovery and reconstruction, bearing in mind the minimum funding requirement of $16.3 billion, half of which is proposed to be met from domestic resources and the other half from our own development partners and friends. The second part of the framework plan incorporates flood resilience in the, in the design and infrastructure projects such as protecting key highways, the main railway line network, as well as an early warning system and capacity building for rescue and relief in future disasters. Our funding gap for minimum recovery is $8 billion and will be needed over the span of the next three years. Excellencies, it is clear that Pakistan's ability to recover from the colossal flood disaster, to restore critical infrastructure and revive rapid economic growth will hinge substantially on the speed of these actions. And the most important link in this chain will be financial resourcing. If that gap continues to obstruct our recovery and minimum resilience needs, the results may be too catastrophic to imagine. This conference is not just about helping to rebuild the lives and livelihoods of the people affected by global crisis. In fact, it is about the solidarity and vision needed to ensure the world's transition to a sustainable future, not just on paper or PowerPoint, but on the ground, in schools, in the fields, in businesses, in industry and homes. Even as we plan for a future of resilience, 
the shocks that disaster bring can never be wholly accounted for, but resilient societies look for the light of opportunity in the darkness of disaster. It is precisely this kind of strategic reset that I'm trying to kickstart today in seeking your support for a recovery plan for the people of Pakistan who are, by the grace of God, very resilient. I know these are times of extreme pressure and economic hardships in many countries, but Pakistan needs a new coalition of the willing, one that can save lives and put them on a path to responsible global citizenship. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm asking of you is more than a rebooting of your compassion for humanitarian relief needs. Today, I am asking for your support for those who have lost their life savings, their homes and livelihoods, those who are sitting under blue sky facing the hardship of winters and looking forward to your help and support from mankind. I am asking for a sustained international support plan to meet this daunting challenge. I am asking for a new lifeline for people who need to power our economy and re-enter the 21st century with a future that is protected for such extreme risks to human security. Together, we have to rebuild their lives and their dream. Your solidarity and long-term support to the people of Pakistan at this very critical juncture will make the difference between staying unprepared or facing the future with renewed hope and aspirations. In the end, I thank you once again for your support in this conference today. Your unity of thought and action will always be remembered by the people of Pakistan. Thank you very much. शहबाज शरीफ ने बैन अवी डोनर्स कॉन्फ्रेंस के अफ्ताह सेशन से खिताब किया और उन्होंने कहा कि का शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ साथ ही उन्होंने बताया कि आज अहम तारीख के अहम मोड़ पर